Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm here with a very long overdue video. Um, let me just explain, let's move this out of the way. Okay, I was rearranging part of my studio last afternoon after I'd finished filming while it was uploading to YouTube, because as you know, I consider my studio sort of a living space which accommodates whichever way I need to work and it was obvious to me I needed more surfaces so I moved stuff around. In doing so I found this sticky note which obviously wasn't sticky enough. It had fallen down behind a cupboard and I'm sure I know what happened I stuck it to a clipboard it must have got tired of hanging on there and dropped off and landed on the floor and through the passage of time got forgotten and it says requests that to me means it was a subscriber's request or a question in a comment um mini plate project and it's got the three there basically someone had asked me what i would do with the mini plates what i did was i got myself a 12 by 12 and i i i painted it because I didn't want the project to be on a white background. I wanted it to be on a coloured background, but I didn't want it to be on a dominant coloured background. So I painted this sort of a pastel yellow. Hopefully it's a little dark today and rainy as always here in Wales. Hopefully that's showing up quite well. And then because of the dimensions of these, and I'm working with the 12 by 12, I had to do some figuring out. Okay, this is, this is sometimes how my brain works. I have an idea but I have to quickly sketch it out to work it was because to the to me, the screen patchwork quilt. Not really sure about this one. This one may not get as used as much as it probably needs to be, or if at all, these two definitely. So I came up with a plan of how to work a 12 by 12 doing this. And then what I'm gonna do, and, and I'll do this towards the end, um, we're going to be creating this background like a quilt and then I'm going to doodle on it. So I'm going to be working with the square first of all, brand new plate. I'm going to keep this just because these are quite easy to store flat. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this on. Oh, something I did do, I don't think you can see it. I put tiny little marks on here every three inches. So help me space it out because when I was doing the calculations, um, these don't fit exactly onto a 12 by 12 so there's going to be a bit of a gap i just need to work out where the gap's going to be Let's get that off there for a start i don't need crumbs before i've even started right so now a hard thing for me is going to be judging the amount of paint because i don't work this small so i'm going to hold this down because i've obviously not got it stuck to anything I'm just going to bray this out. There's also going to be quite a bit of clean up in between things. So I will do my best to try and keep this video somewhere around about an hour and 15. But to be honest with you, I think this is going to be a long video because it's going to be a long process. So I'm going to come in. I need to do the corners first. So there you go. Pop that down. Peel up. Okay, that's fine. Right, I'm going to add another shade of purple to that now. Uh, this is a plum purple. Only because I've got this on the go, I might as well just put another little bit on, darken it up and get two lots of colour out of one. Also, I'm putting these to one side so I can remember which colours I've used because it might become important when I get to the stamping. So I'm trying to think who I've seen using these little plates. I know I've seen da um, Diane Reevely use them in her dialogues, which is her, her journaling system. Um, I can't remember. I think if you went to the Gel Press website, there's bound to be a tutorial there for them. OK, right. Now I've got enough on there. I'm just going to come in with a bit of tissue and clean it up because I don't I don't need everything to be purple. I want to keep this quite happy, quite cheerful. I may, as time goes by, 
with this video, I might actually edit out some of the cleaning. So if all of a sudden you go to a fade and then it fades back in as clean, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying not to waste time, should I say. Right, I quite like this colour. I just used this in my last video, actually. It's not very often I do two videos with the same technique this close together, but I did the colour combo video. Um, and all of my stuff was already out. That was the video I'd finished filming yesterday. And it was because of that video I planned to turn my studio around a little bit. And it was because that was still out. I went, you know, why not do it? Well, I found it. It's in my mind. Can you see me? You can see me. Right. I'm trying not to have too much paint on these plates so they don't move around. Right. That's quite nice. Let's see. Um... I'm going to have a bit of a, what's this, forest green? I think forest green is sort of a bluish green. So add a little bit of that to this. You only need the smallest amount of this paint, I'm telling you. You watch, I'll put this on here now and it won't be enough. Oh, I think that'll be okay. So, as with all of my videos, guys, don't forget, you control the buttons. If you want to fast forward, if you want to go to another section, I will never know whether you fast forward. If you want to watch it in real time, by all means, do so. Grab a cup of tea, get a chocolate biscuit, do whatever you want to do and watch it. Or fast forward or even watch it on double speed or two and a half times or whatever you want to watch it. Just jump ahead to wherever you wish to see it. Or as I do with a lot of the videos I watch, I actually watch them and pause them or stop them and then go back to them the next day. Because sometimes I don't have an hour to spend watching just one video. Right, put that back on there. Right, it's important when I put these back on to make sure there's no air bubbles underneath the plate, uh, underneath this acetate because otherwise you'll end up with bubbles and if you do they could mark the plate. I think when I put these back into my storage system I'll just put them between two layers of paper and actually get rid of these which is what I normally do. Right we're going on to the triangle now. Completely virgin plate. I've never even taken the cover off that one. Right so I need to put two triangles in each of these. Um, how do I want to do this colour wise? Right. We've got this pink here. Now I'm going to try and keep, like I wouldn't put pink next to that and that, but I might put it next to that and that. Oh, that looks like a lot of paint, Griffiths. I think I should really have a smaller brayer. This one feels enormous. Normally people are saying to me, Kerry, why don't you use a bigger brayer when it comes to doing my 12 by 12, but this just feels really weird working this small. All right, so I'm going to pop this on here and I'm going to pop it pretty much mid distance between the edge of here and the little mark I put on there. Now there are going to be areas like this area here that I'm not going to be able to fill in with a triangle as it is. So what I'm probably going to have to do is I'm probably going to have to mask this bit off lesson in masking and that means that I will actually um, be able to use it. I think what I'm going to do just to save time I think I'm going to do each of the triangles on here the same. I know I said I wasn't going to repeat colours or put pinks next to pinks but I think that might speed this up a little bit because it will depend on how I finish them off anyway as to what they look like. So Again, lining it up between there and there, tapping this down. Oh, it looks better with a bit, bit of a thicker layer. Right. So, so yes, as I was saying, um, I know Diane Reevely uses these in her art journals and in her dialogues, um, which is her, it's almost like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A traveller's notebook diary system. It's very similar to the one I use because 
actually watching Diana use, sorry, Diane, Diane using her traveller size notebooks was the reason I started using traveller size notebooks, although I do it in a very different way. So I'm going to see whether I can get another one on top of this because I didn't have enough paint on there, I feel, and I think it looks a bit wishy-washy. That's better. Right, let's clean that off the prayer. And what's this? Turquoise. Let's do turquoise. I'm looking for colourful. I'm looking for bright. I'm looking for something to be fun. As I said, I'm hoping to do some doodling on this at the end of um, this video. Now, I'm not going to make this into two videos. Um, normally, with my longer projects, I do, and I launch them on the same day although with this one I think we're just going to make this a longer video or a video as long as it takes and as I said you control the buttons I'm trying not to move this around as I put it down um, you control the buttons you can fast forward do whatever you wish so there you go so it's it's wet and horrible and rainy here in Wales but you know what I'd much rather have this than, oh, slipped as I put it down. Never mind. Doodling will cover a multitude of sins. Um, although it's a lot better than some of the weather I'm, I'm seeing the rest of the world have. And I'd much rather have this than snow and sleet and hail and all of the other things that come with winter months. It is only February here. And I personally feel our winter has moved, whereas winter when I was a child used to be about December, January, February. I now feel winter for us is more likely to be um, maybe February, March, April. The seasons have definitely moved, let's put it that way. So there you go. So that's giving me my border. I want to put one in there and then we'll talk about, well not talk, we will then get um, the other areas sorted. Let's clean that off there. Is that done? They clean up really well. I'm liking how fast these clean up. Right, so if I want something there, then there, not this obviously. Um, how about a bit of orange, guys? I like orange. Let's put a bit of orange in there. A little bit of that on there. It's very economical on paint, but not very economical on time, is it? So January was busy. Um, I've got some really exciting projects on the go at the moment. Well, I find them. I think they're exciting anyway. Um, I'm hoping to do a couple of launches of new things in the month of March. Um, although they're taking quite a bit of research and time and effort on my behalf to actually get them up and running. But you know what? If something's worth doing, it's worth doing well, as my mother always used to say. So I'm going to take my time and I'm going to do it properly. And I'm the only one who set that deadline. So if it doesn't happen by March, it happens in April. So be it. There you go. So I just get one more out of this. I should be able to. I'm not worried that they're not not perfect. Um, it, it's not bothering me in the slightest. Right, and I know there's only four going to fit in the middle, so we're not a million miles off. Right, this needs to clean up. I'm thinking maybe blue. Blue would be fun. That's too blue. This is feeling a bit like a baby's blanket to me at the moment, to be honest with you. Um, right, I'm using some sticky notes. Just regular sticky notes. These were actually off. This was a bigger pad and I just took the top top area off. Um, and what I'm doing is, for those who have not done this before, this is called masking. And what you're doing is you're masking the area underneath here to protect it. So, and you'll see the reason why the moment I do this. Oh, let's take that off there. I think I've got some crumbs in there, which is going to be a bit of a pain in the bottom. 
Yes, I did have crumbs in it. I think I need a little bit more on there. I cleaned my brayer off to get rid of the crumbs and I think I cleaned the brayer off too well. That's better. Um, I think these mini plates come in other shapes as well. So basically I'm stamping this across there. And as you can see, it's covered that up for me. So I'm going to work my way around and do that. Wish I didn't have that little bit there, but you know what? It's okay. Um, so yes, I think I've seen these in ovals. I've seen them in a rectangle. I think I've seen them in a star shape. Part of me thinks they might come as a heart as well, but I, I could just be wishful thinking at that point. I, I don't think I've ever seen them sold individually. I think they're always sold as a set of three. Right, obviously this isn't working there because I'm being a bit too cautious. Let's see if I can go in and repair that. If I'm brave, I might be able to do it. There you go, it's kind of okay. What do I want to do the same over here? Mm, that's okay. Right. I was hoping this, this blue was going to look a little bit brighter than this, but what I might do is when I put the patterning on some of these, I might put the patterning on in white, which means there'll be a really high contrast. Right, lesson from the last time, press down the edge of the paper. I'm not sure why I keep getting that squishy effect because I don't feel I've got too much on my gel plate. Could just be the nature of the paint as well. Right, this would be one of those opportunities, I'd say, fast forward, guys. Don't worry, your volume hasn't faded on you. I just happen to be concentrating on doing this. I'll tell you something I'm doing at the moment, actually. Um, I'm reading all of the Harry Potter books again. Now, I haven't read them since they came out, which is, gosh, that's got to be more than 20 years ago now. Um, and I haven't read them since then. And it's, I mean, I'm quite good at remembering plot lines and stories and stuff like that. However, because I watch the Harry Potter movies as well, I seem to have forgotten the amount of detail that is actually in some of these books. There's stuff in there that seriously has not made it to the movies. Now, I, I happen to mention that because I do know that they're doing like a Harry Potter reboot for a television series. Um, I can't remember, is it HBO Max or something? I seem to see a, a, a post on it the other day and they said the series is going to be 10 years long um, because they want to address all of the books over again. It's not going to be a remake of the movies. It's going to be a fresh interpretation of, of the stories within the book and covering apparently things that were missed in the movies or deemed not necessary to the overall plot. Who made that decision? I don't know. 
Um, but obviously there, there's budgets involved with making a movie and part of the budget is also the time, the time and the length of the movie. Um, I do hear that J.K. Rowling is actually the executive, either producer or director of this TV series. So if anyone's got an insight into it, you can guarantee it's going to be her because she's the author. Right. Now, I need to put four in here and then we can move on to some patterning stuff. Now. So I just want to see whether. So I'm just trying to work out whether. Yes. OK, so when I put these on, there's going to be a thin line around these because I'm going to put the squares corner to corner to corner on those. Because this was where the math came in, where I was trying to work out exactly what colours were where. Now, I'm going to do each individual one of these a different colour. And they're going to be colours that I haven't used so far. So I think we're going to use a yellow, because I like yellow. And it's a yellow background, so why not make one of the squares yellow? Although, as you can see, this is cadmium yellow hue. It's, it's quite a pungent yellow. This is going to be tricky. I'm going to have to move it in slightly so I can see. I'm trying to keep that parallel. Now, for me, it was an obvious choice to do like a quilt block with these. And that's probably because I do quilt. I mean, I'm not I'm not manufacturing quilts. Um, I've made a few for myself around the house. The trouble is, and I've never made a five. I might have made some bags as well out of quilted material. The trouble for me is I like all the geometric piecing of quilts together. And once I've done the topper, I kind of lose interest. And then I don't do the borders, I don't put the backing, and I don't do the actual quilting. So I have quite a few toppers, but not so many quilts. Right, what's the next colour I want next to this? Uh, not next to I think I want to put one over here. Right, raspberry red. Why not raspberry red? I feel that's probably a little bit too much paint for one square. All right, hopefully this doesn't move around on me because this feels like quite a wet paint. Okay, I can deal with that. There was too much paint on there. Right, I've got a baby blue in a chalk paint. And I know you don't need to shake tubes normally, but I find chalk paints tend to separate out. So I think I'm going to do a baby blue block. I don't need much of that. And looking at this... I don't really want to do a white because white's probably going to be part of um, the colours that I use for the doodling. Oh, I've contaminated the blue a bit with pink. Hey ho, it is what it is. Right. That should fit in there. Oh, that's okay. Right, one more block of colour. I don't know about you, but I'll be glad now. I mean, this was fun to start with. Now I'm like, OK, can we just get to the other bit, please? Right. I just need to decide on that colour there. I know it's a weird choice, but I'm going to use grey. Only that looks a bit bluey, but the grey might be all right. Uh, a bit pinkish, but this might be right. Don't use this hardly ever. Grey isn't really a colour I reach for, to be honest with you. Nothing wrong with grey. It's just, it's just something I don't reach for. Mm. 
God, that pink is just, or oh, that raspberry red is giving and giving, I can tell you. Right. Let's pop you in there. Oops, let's see if I can get that bit. There you go. Okay. A little bit of this. And also, if anything shows through, it's going to be a pale version of the ones that are around this. So and get this central. I'm trying to line this up, looking through an iPad. And let's let that press that down, because I may actually go around this and draw around it. That's well, not the most central circle in the world, but you know what? It's fine. Right. So I am going to continue to clean up, as I said, and I will come back to you in two seconds for you, and it'll be a few minutes for me. I just need to clear the decks of stuff, guys. So here we are back again. It's not fully dry, but I mean, it's such a thin coat, it'll be fine. But it gave me a chance to clean up and reset. Now I've pulled in four of my stamps, my foam stamps. There'll be a link to my products in the description box below. So I'm not gonna go, I think that's Silly Circles. That might be Frayed Weave. I think that's Regimented Rectangles. And that might be coded mesh, but don't hold me to that because goodness knows I can't remember my own products. Right. My plan is now I'm going to choose some of these squares and I'm actually going to put a pattern over the top of them. Um, probably not the central ones, but definitely the corners and, and pieces of this. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to choose a color that's darker than the one I'm like the lavender color here. If I put this over it, it will make it more interesting. So I'm just putting acrylic paint down. Don't need a lot, as normal. But what I want to do is I want to not contaminate the pieces around it. So I'm going to come in now. And I'm going to mask off the sides. And I'm hoping then this will make this really pop off the page. And I'm just going to come in with the stamping it in, making sure it's all stamped on there. I'm just going to pop that on there and I gently press that. You don't need to pummel one of these, but I do like to go along and just make sure it's fully in contact. Then when I take this off, da -da, I've got a pattern block. Right, as I've got these on the go and I like this colour, I'm going to do the same thing with this triangle here. And I think this time I'm going to put the entire block on in a diamond shape. So using the same, same stamp, but giving a different effect. I'm liking that. But do I want that anywhere else? Mm. No, let's leave that. Right, this is going to be sat on a damp cloth so that the paint doesn't dry out on me. Um, and then I can wash wash the stamps after we finish. Right, I need to clear the decks of that. Now, if I wanted to, I could cut a circle of paper out and actually lay that in the centre and then do this technique around it so then the centre is more prominent. But I'm going to make a feature of that anyway, so I'm not overly bothered. Right. Um, da, 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 da. I'm trying to use the same colours, which is why I kept them to one side. So I think we're going to use the raspberry colour. And this time, I think I'm going to use the blocks. Now, let's do this one here. Don't need a lot. This is a very economical process, as I said. It is a bit time consuming though, I must admit. Right. Regimented rectangles. Put some on there. Yay! 
Okay. So it gives it sort of some textural elements, and I think I'm going to do the same thing here because it's a different base color. It will it will have a different intensity. Now I've only pulled out four stamps, so you can see I'm not going to do a huge amount of stamping. I'm just doing enough to give this sort of a starter appearance for when I come in with the doodling. Yay, that was good. Right, I do need to start working down this side as well, don't I? Um, I might actually do that again there, but this time I'll do the pattern horizontal instead of as a triangle. And I'm very aware that my paint is probably drying out on me, so it may not be a perfect impression anyway. Okay, that was cool. Right, so clean up again. So where am I up to? I think I want to bring in some terracotta. Terracotta, and I think I want to do this over maybe one or two of these. Uh, oh, that needs to go onto a damp cloth. Right, we're going to use the frayed fabric now. Or frayed weave, I can't remember what this one's called. So, right, this side has got nothing on it so far. Now I'm going to have to make sure I cover the three sides of this. to keep it squared. And I might do that on the opposite side as well, but do what I did before. Instead of it being squared, I'll put it on on an angle this time. Utilizing variations in a theme, basically. The last colour I'm going to do is I'm going to do black and I'm doing black with these circles on purpose because for me it's really hard to draw a perfect circle. However, if I stamp the circle in black then at least I've got a chance I can colour it in with different colours. So just going to pull in my black. Oh, best make up our minds where it's going to go. I'm probably going to do a couple of patches of this. Definitely both corners. Kind of wish I had made a template for the middle of that, but too late now. Project started. Right. So has every... Oh, I can't put anything there. I could put something there. So I don't know why I'm trying to mathematically work this out. Um, but I do feel I want to put, put it in more than just a couple of places. I'm trying not to have the same pattern next to the same pattern is, is, is what I'm trying to do. Right, 
Right, so if I do that, it's going to have to be here. So thank you for your patience with this, guys. It's it's not a fast technique, as we can see. Um, but I think it's going to be fun when it's finished. Right, I think I just want... Oh, I've got that and that, so it has to... Oh, why not? Let's just balance them up. It wasn't intentional. It just seems to have turned out that way. So I think we can consider that ready for the next stage. So definitely going to have to stop the video now. It's going to have to wait for probably 15 to 20 minutes. Just want to make sure everything is dry before I start trying to do marking over the top. So here I'm back again. We're all cleaned up. And this is the point where I'm going to be brave because the last time I tried doing a 12 by 12 doodle project, it was a bit much for me, but since then I've done other projects. I now know a bit more of what I'm doing. I've got a bit more hand confidence, so I'm excited to do this. But first of all, before I do that, huge shout out, thank you to Elizabeth, Julia, Heather, Margie, um, Alison, and, and there, were, there were quite a few others. Thank you so very, very, very much. Um, those lovely people actually hit the like, um, the thanks button below the video and they donated some money to me, which helps me actually support buying supplies for making these videos. So thank you. And what you bought me or helped me buy was I bought some Posca pens because before then I only really had black, white, silver, gold, and, and I just had a couple of colors, but I, I was struggling because I really didn't have many. But I bought this set and I now have these. I'm very excited. I went for the dark colors because this set is the dark color, the deep, deep colors as they call it here, because I didn't really want bright colors. Um, so if you're interested, I mean, you can take a screenshot, you can see what, what they say here, and by all means say what they say here. Um, I don't know whether Posca pens are available in every single country, but I know they are in my country, so which is why I use them. Now, let's pull out a piece of paper, just so I can have it to one side, just so that, just to make sure my pens are working before I put them on here. Now, I'm going to do this as I did my last Doodle project, and that is, I'm going to do one section, then I'm going to pause you, and I'm going to do the same repeated process around the whole thing and then bring you back because there's no way I'm going to be able to do this in I don't even know how long this video is so far I should imagine it's about 45 minutes if not more um, and I can't I can't get this done in half an hour or it'll take me a while also my inkling is that I'd really like to bring in a ruler but I'm trying to not bring in a ruler okay so just know that I'm doing this all by hand. So I'm going to start with black. I'm going to start with black. I'm going to start with grey. I had grey. I didn't know how, how dark grey was. I think I'm going to do this in grey. Right, what I'm going to do, and as I said, I will do one section for you, and then I will pause the camera. I'm going to outline every single block in grey. Choosing grey because it's like the shadow, um, and then the black would be more dramatic. So my aim is, pray for me guys. Oh, <laughs> it's nothing like being nervous on camera, is there? Now, as I said, I could have come in with the ruler but 
my interpretation of doodling isn't necessarily using a ruler. Although I have been trying to learn zentangling and I've used a ruler for my zentangling uh, purely because if I want a tile, which is, I think, the basic shape, which is three and a half, is it three and a half inches? I can't remember the size of a tile without looking it up. Um, I want to make sure I'm using the right dimensions. So that's what I'm going to do. Am I going to do the outside edge as well? Yes, I might do the outside edge as well. I'll think about that as I do the rest. So I'm going to pause you now and then I'm going to outline every single tile, including the circle in the middle. And yes, we're going to do that freehand. So back in two seconds, guys. So there you go. That's with the grey. I, yes, I can't believe what a difference just outlining something makes. Right. I need to address some of these areas now that don't have pattern in them. And I don't have a pink, or do I? What colour is this? Raspberry. I don't mind raspberry. Right. So I'm going to now address this one here. So I'm going to do... Yes, an ever-decreasing triangle shape, I think. I'm going to keep turning the page. I'm sorry if that annoys you as a viewer, but I found that if I draw my lines from right to left, I have more of a chance of keeping a straight line than if I try to draw a line towards me. And I think that just comes from practicing and watching watching myself, to be honest, as to what what's easier for me to do. I, I did struggle doing lines, but I think the more I'm doing it, the more confident I get. Hopefully my head's not bouncing in and out of shot. I like this colour. What was this again? Raspberry. It's a bit dark for the raspberries that I think you can buy. I think when I'm coming to the little bit, I can do that. There you go. Okay, that's a good bit. Anything else with pink on it that I really want to attack? I think because this bit here went awry, I think I'm going to put some scallops down there. I think that addresses that issue. Right, so what's the next colour I want to look at? So I've got this teal thing happening here. And I've got emerald green. How green is emerald green? Oh, that's very green, isn't it? Um, but that's OK. Right, I'm going to put this under here because I'm probably going to go off the page a bit. I must admit, for those of you who have said, um, just keep doing it, like my friend Darcy said, Kerry, just keep going, it will get easier. You were right, it is. And actually, it's become very enjoyable, if I ever get time, to just sit down and doodle for a little bit. And another thing I've done too is, I've given myself the rule, not that there are rules, but a personal little guideline that I don't need to finish in one go. So maybe I started this and I come back to it in a week's time. Obviously not with this video, but, but that's the sort of thing I'm thinking. Right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what to do in this one. I'll just do something.
let's just put a line around that, I think. I know it's got a black line around it, but and when this dries, I might re-establish that black line. Because as you can see, I went over the black line there, but we're embracing that. We're not going to get tied up with that. Right. Now these need something different as well. And I'm wondering whether white is the option here. Now white, that's quite a thin white, and I mean thin line. Do I want to do it in this? Yes, I do. Let's start somewhere where I'm not going to be stuck with other paint. I think I'm just going to come in and do squiggles. I quite like that. Right, let's do that somewhere else as well. Just do, and they're just not, not continuous lines. They're just squiggles, and that will help me cover up some of those areas. I don't want to do any more of those, so let's go over to this one. Is that the one that, that looks wet to me? And I'll put my hand in something wet. Right, let's let's do lines on this one. Now you'll notice I'm avoiding the middle at the moment. I have a plan, people. I have a plan. I kind of want to make the middle the feature for obvious reasons. Right. Do I want any more? Let's go in this way. Is that one dry? That looks dry now. Right, I'm going to have to, not because I'm being a perfectionist, don't get me wrong, I'm going to go in and tidy up some of these by putting a line over them, re-establishing the line like there. I think I want to make these areas white. Right, I think for the time being, I'm going to let that marinate in my brain for a moment. I want to do something with these blue ones, but currently not sure. There's a little bit there. I just want to tick up. There you go. I'm not sure what I want to do in the blue areas, and I don't want to force the issue. Right. I'm going to take the bigger white one, and I'm going to fill in some of these circles. Um, if they overlap, I'm not going to fill in the overlapped one. That looks cute. I do the same on here. Right, I think at this point I'm going to pause you and I will do the circles filling them in because this is one of those instances where it's a repeated process. Back in two seconds. Right, there you go. I filled in not all of the circles, but a lot of the circles in the design. I also went and re-established the grey lines around those areas where I overlapped the grey line, just to tidy it up a bit. Right. Um, I need to address the middle now. And I kind of want to draw a big flower in the middle. Um, now, the thing I'm really bad at is drawing circles. So I could pull in the template and draw a circle, but I'm not going to, because where's the challenge in that? So I'm going to bring, this is okra, or okra, I think someone said it was. Now I found if I start a circle and do a spiral, I'm more likely to end up with something that is a circle. 
see, I, I think it's pretty pretty good for me. Um, so just know that that's that's a technique that I've learned for myself that I found works for me. Now I've got this ochre colour, and I want to do something else with this colour. I kind of do. I wonder. This is very pointy, pointy, isn't it? I'm, I'm trying to think of something different to do other than there's diamonds all the time. Um, right. Let's do circles here. Right. Again, I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to do that on all four sides. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a fine black and put a black line around each of those circles as well. Um, and a circle around the middle circle as well. You don't need to see. You've seen me draw a line before. So there you go. I've, I've circled the black and I've circled all of the ochre colour. Just going to do another thing between each of these circles because as I was doing, I was thinking there's lots and lots of circles on here. I think I want to change it up a bit. So I'm going to put a dash in between each of these as well. And that will just make a nice little border along here. Now, I didn't measure these. They're not equally spaced. I know there's probably not the same amount of dots on every side. Does it matter? I'm trying to believe it doesn't. Okay. So that's coming along nicely. Right, I had an idea for the centre, which I'm going to do. Um, and we're going to, fingers crossed, it's going to work. I'm going to draw a big flower in the centre. So where these divisions are, let's just lay that down so I don't put my hand and ache it, they might still be wet. I'm going to draw a petal. And the reason I keep turning it around, for me personally, is the fact that because my hand is in the same position and I'm drawing the same shape, then I do find that um, I kind of am able to do the same shape almost equal to its other parts. Does that make sense? because I'm not changing the angle of my hand, I have a better chance of getting something that looks similar. And I'm going to try and put one in between each of these. Hopefully I've left enough room. This one might be a tight squeeze. That's not bad. I'm okay with that. Right, I want to do. I want to put something in the centre. I wonder how the orange will look over the top of that colour. I just want to make the centre of this. I'm going to hold it vertically to do the dots. Now, the trick is not putting my hand in that later until it's fully dried. Right, I think it's time I addressed some of this now. Um, how green is this green? It's 
quite a dark green. I didn't really want it to be that dark. Um, I haven't got any other green. I was going to do leaves, but I think we're we're not going to do leaves. Or maybe we'll do leaves, but just leaves don't have to be green, do they? They can be whatever colour I choose them to be. I think I'm going to draw leaves with the white Posca pen and then outline them while all of that is drying. And it gives me an opportunity to actually cover up this square here. Where it had a bit of a moment. Right, OK, so the paint will lift slightly. Could be that it, it's maybe not fully dry all the way through the layers. That's fine. So we're going to have slightly pink leaves. Those will stand out a lot better once they're outlined. Well, that's addressed that problem anyway with that big white patch that I had there. The white's okay. I'm not sure it was a good idea, but let's get the pink off the nib of this so it doesn't contaminate the next thing I tried to draw that's white. Okay, I'll come back to that. Um, right, another pattern I've seen done that I quite liked was just crosses. So I'm going to use this purple because purple and yellow are complementary. So OK, I'm happy with that. I think it's really funny that when I'm filming a video normally, I can talk and do stuff. But doing this, I'm really struggling. <laughs> OK, I think those leaves are probably dry enough for me to come in now and and work around them in black. Okay, that's not that bad. I think I want to come in and put some black dots in there. Maybe I want to take the what colour dots do I want is the question. Do I want to stay dramatic? Do I want to go light? And then we've got these two to do, which is good. Let's go this colour. What's this? This is Prussian blue. Oh, I thought it was purple. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to come in and do dots. Again, I found holding my pen vertically means I get more of a circular dot 
down an oval. If you come in from the side, it becomes an oval. that looks okay right I need to make a decision about these two areas and I think I should keep it quite simple because to be honest with you everything is looking a little bit busy and I also need to dress the center of the flower now as I said I don't have anything that's a pink pink white's not going to work we found out white will lift the paint mind you there is a layer of white between the red and that color I don't want to do, seems to be a lot of orange on here. See, I don't think white would come up as really white, especially with that color. And I know that Posca pens are matte colored. What color is this? This is not brown, is it? This is ruby red. No, that's the wrong color. Keep being drawn to the yellow. Oh, that's the aqua, sorry. Keep being drawn to the orange. And I think I should really go with my gut feeling and do the orange. Right, these dots that I've done are still wet. I can see they're still wet. So I carefully come in. And fill in all of these petals. Okay, I'm getting very nervous of these dots. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you and I'm going to get a hairdryer and I'm going to hairdry these dots until they're dry because I would hate at this point to smear stuff. Phew, that was a bit nerve wracking. Right, so I, I did all of the orange into the petals. Then I did go around the petals again. Oh, sorry. I did all the orange in the petals. Then I went in with a white Posca and tried to cover up some of the pinkiness of that. Then I went round it all again with a black Posca. Just to, I'm happy with that now. That's, that's okay. Right, we still have to address these two areas. And I'm not sure how I want to do that. I'm wondering, right, I didn't use the green and I kind of wanted to use the green. And I'm wondering how to use the green. I've got these two squares left and I quite want to use it in there, quite want to. So English is that, Griffiths. I wonder. Okay, right. Let's see how good I am at drawing the curve repetitively. So. I guarantee I'm not going to get the spacing right all on both sides, but you know what? Let's turn it slightly a bit easier on the wrist. I must admit, trying to do Zen Tangle patterns and things like that have definitely helped me with my confidence in drawing lines. And also, drawing lines has helped me with my confidence in drawing lines. Um, I still sometimes struggle with trying to work out pattern combinations. Um, but that, that will come with practice, I know it will. The more I do, the more I'll be able to do it. It's like with anything. 
If you practice, you get better at something. Okay, I'm wondering whether I'll do the same thing on this side, to be honest. I kind of do. Let's just do the same over here. I think that's okay. I think all I've got left to do are these four pieces. So one, two, three, four pieces. And I think I need to keep it really simple. I quite like the dots thing, and I think I'm going to do dots in those for no other reason. I need to do something about that too. Or do I? No, I don't. I'm going to just do the dot thing because it's quick and easy. And it also means that I can finish this up because you've all been very patient if you've lasted with me all the way to the end of this. We've done a lot. And hopefully for the person who asked to see what you can do with those small gel plates, hopefully they forgive me for making them wait well over a year. I apologise, I lost my sticky note. I no longer use sticky notes for things like that. I've got a notebook now and I write down things from subscribers in there and then I periodically go through it and make a video of it if I haven't been able to answer it in the comment with wording then I will make a video because sometimes seeing it is easier than trying to explain it. Right, are we done? I think we're done. Let's call that done, shall we? So I'm more than happy with that. Um, what's it going to become? Goodness knows what it's going to become. I mean, I could top and tail that and make it into a journal cover, or I could just leave it exactly as it is. And I'm happy with that. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you for your patience. If you stay till the end, good on you. Thank you for that. Um, if you fast forwarded, nice you were to see how it turned out anyway. Okay, guys, have a good one. Um, and there's only one thing left for me to say, really. I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time, goodbye now.